pregame.com. Welcome back to pregame.tv. We're going to go baseball action Saturday afternoon. Ken, we're going to take a look at the L.A. Dodgers, San Diego Padres. And, Ken, I'm going to start this off. The Padres, simply put, I think right now they're the most underrated team in baseball. Nobody expected anything from the Padres this year because, let's face it, you're in a division where you've got the world champion San Francisco Giants. Then you got all the money spent by the L.A. Dodgers. And then you've got a team, Arizona, that was just, you know, two years removed from, you know, a sensational season. Uh, people, you got Colorado, Yeah, too. people thought there would be, you know, some improvement on Colorado. Yep. This was a last-place team, San Diego. And they started the season out like a last-place mm -hmm. team. They lost five – they won five of the first 20 games. Start out five and 15. But since then, 32 and 21 – since that opening start, and they're eight and two their last ten games. This team's playing great baseball right now, and the big knock on San Diego in years past is when you, you played San Diego, they didn't score any runs. You you had to win games two one three two. That's the only way you were going to win. This team's scoring runs all of a sudden, and you know when you're scoring runs, four runs or more now, thirteen of their last fifteen games. What do you where do you put up this sudden surge with the Padres? Yeah, you know what's cool is that it's a different guy. It seems like almost every night, uh, Venable, Blanks, these guys have hit some long balls. Uh, Denorfi has come up with some hits uh, on the DL though. You have Cabrera, Mabin, Jerko, and Alonzo. I mean, so you're thinking, okay, they're in trouble now. They're starting to lose depth. Guys keep coming up. Headley's been a nice addition once he got off the DL. And you're right. Last year, they started off the same way, but they continued to plummet until after the All-Star game. Right before, or actually right before the All-Star break, they started getting it together. And then right after the All-Star break, they were on fire. And then it kind of uh, panned out in September. They kind of dropped again. But I talked to Ted Leitner, the voice of the Padres, prior to the season. 72, I think, was the over-under win total for the Padres. And he said, Ken, go over. He said, I know on paper you'll look at this team and you'll think, um, they're going to have trouble winning 72, dropping 90. He said, but I guarantee you they're going to win close to 500. They're going to be 500 or maybe a few games above. And I said, okay, when they started 5-15, and 15, like you said, yeah. I was going, Ted, what do you – I got a little homer call there. But now looking at them, over 500 and 23-14 and 14 or 23-15, whatever they are at Petco, they're very tough at home. Yeah, in uh, the pitching matchup here, you've got uh, Volquez going for San Diego. Now, he's a guy that, you know, I'll admit you – you never know what you're going to get with him. He, you know, he's not. He doesn't have dominating stuff, but he'll go well, out. He's there. on sometimes. He but does have he, dominating stuff. But he's he's one of those guys that's going to go out there and chew some innings up for you right. and give you that, you know, the quality start. Give me six innings, you know, three runs, and we'll take it from there. He's going against Granky, and I'll tell you what. I don't know if there's a pitcher in Major League Baseball that is more Doctor Jekyll, Mister Hyde than Zach Granky. This guy is absolutely phenomenal at home. When he goes to the mound, it's almost an automatic W when he pitches at home. But on the road, he just can't, he, he doesn't get it done. And I know through his career, you know, he had all those years in Kansas City, so a lot of those stats are a little bit skewed from the Kansas City days. Mm -hmm. But it's continued the last three years when he's pitched in Milwaukee, when he's pitched at the end of the season in, uh, with the Angels, and now you know he's pitching with the Dodgers. So he's had teams that he's supposed to win with, but he can't do it on the road. And there's a big split with the difference on the ERA home and away. I mean, you look at a guy that uh, he's got an ERA on the road of 7.45. His home ERA is 2.12. Wow. How can one guy be that day and night? There you go. It reminds me of my old buddies from the old sports memo back in the day, the home road dichotomy. I used to hear that all the time, and I go, boy, that's problematic, isn't it? <laughs> like, I used to laugh at those guys and make fun. But, uh, yeah, he is. He's uh, Jekyll and Hyde. There is no doubt about it. And uh, he is the true definition of a homer without calling the game. <laughs> and Marco D'Angelo, this is your play, so let's make it official. All right. All right, guys, we take a look at this one. Zach Grinke on the road. I'm going against him all the time. This is a guy, like I said, big difference in ERA. And you look at this game starts at 415 local time. So it's going to be a day game. He doesn't pitch as well in the day as he does at night as well. So we're going to get a little added advantage. We got him in his worst situation pitching on the road. We've got him in his worst situation night, day game versus a night game. And we've got a team, San Diego Padres, that – 
I feel are totally undervalued. This team, as I said, slow start, but they are playing great baseball right now. And can the public just they they're not quick to react when somebody's supposed to be bad and they start bad. That's all they remember is that early start. We're getting them right now. We're taping on Friday night. They're a small dog at home. I think they should be favored in this game. I'm going with San Diego. It's my free play. Let's try to keep this streak going. Our free plays on a six and two run the last several weeks here on pregame.tv. So I hope we keep that going. We're going to be right back. Take a look at another baseball game up next. Pregame.tv.